Hello, everybody. It's Sasha here with the Sassy Lasses. And you know what? I have like the coolest guest ever today. Uh, oh. In my circles, he is known as the Million Dollar Man, although he doesn't like the, the title. We all love it. Uh, but this is Dan Paulson. And I'm going to go ahead and let Dan introduce himself first before we dive right in. But you guys have to know how excited I am. Hello, I am Dan Paulson. I own a company called Envision Development International, and I help business owners get unstuck, get out of their way, and get on their way to profits, making the money they want, living the lifestyle they want. How's that? That that sounds awesome. So you're like you're like a tow truck for businesses stuck in the mud, right? <laughs> <laughs> or in this case, stuck in the snow. Um, until we get some nice weather out there. Yeah, it is kind of that way. It's working with, uh, I spend a lot of time working with companies that have been successful in their own right, but now it, they're getting challenged to reach that next level of success. And usually that's um, you know, anything from systems to leadership to communication to people, you name it, it, I get involved in all aspects of the business and help them figure out what's working, what's not, what we need to change to make it better. And yeah, so many organizations need that once in a while. Catherine is watching with us out in the audience. Hi, Thank Catherine. You. She says hi to us as well. So great to have you all out there viewing for this amazing topic. Now, I love the idea of getting people unstuck. Um, it's similar to what I do, but in a completely different uh, <laughs> category. So I really want to kind of dive into that. Like, where are most business owners getting stuck? Well, I think uh, if you're familiar with the book, The E Myth, that's probably what I, I relate to people most that are owning their own business or, or kind of stuck is we start our businesses, our businesses then grow, we add employees, we add equipment, we add everything to it. And the problem is we never really step out of the way of being the guy working in his business to being the guy or gal working on their business. So as the company grows, you, you put systems in place, you kind of hodgepodge things together as it's needed. And over time, what happens is the systems now bog themselves down or you hire people. You have people that have been with you long term and now you got new people coming in. The new people don't understand the, the mission of the organization or, or you know, why the owner is doing what they're doing. So there's some confusion there. Uh, there might be different ideas on how the business should be run. So there's a lot of different things that go on in a company. And it's, it's never typically one thing in one area that needs to be addressed. It's typically a few things across all areas. It's not that the things aren't working, it's just that they've reached a point where the owner is now bogged down by his own success, which is, you know, I guess a good problem to have because if you're making money and you're growing, it's wonderful, but if you can't spend time with your family or your kids, or you feel like every time you leave that you come back to nothing but fires or problems, that's a sign that things probably could be working better than they should. Fair enough. Now. I are you, I mean, do you work with all level of business owners? Because for me and for my, my organization, we primarily work with the, the, the really new guys, you know, from startup to stardom. But you primarily take the, the larger companies, right? The, the big fish who used to see really great growth and something stalled them, right? So you're more working with those guys that used to have it figured out, but maybe don't anymore? Yeah, I would say it's, it's anywhere from small to medium sized companies. I think the real big company, companies or the publicly traded companies while I can help them. They're not my ideal. Uh, the sweet spot is really the guys that are probably, you know, doing anywhere from I'd say two and a half to $5 million a year up to probably about 15 to $20 million a year. They're small enough that they still need help, but they're large enough that they have the resources to make the changes if, if need be. Because like I said, it's typically not one thing that needs to be addressed. It's a number of things. And uh, if, if you hire me in and, and you can't afford then to make the changes that you need to make, it really, we're not gonna get anywhere. It's it's not a good use of your resources, nor is it a good use of my time. So it's really finding those companies that have established themselves beyond the point of just survival, and now they're getting into the point of growth. And, and how they wanna grow to be more efficient, more effective is what's important to them. Absolutely. And so when you're attacking this idea of growth, um, I know that you're attacking it from multiple different angles, but I know that when I work with a lot of business owners at any level, a lot of what they ask is, why can't I seem to grow my sales? Um, so they look very, very straight at the whole sales point. Uh, what mm -hmm. would you say to a business owner like that? Well, everything starts at the top. 
So the, the first person I go to is the business owner themselves because, again, it's a lot of the things that they're doing that may or may not be preventing that growth. If the question is why, why can't I grow sales, is it really that you're too broad in what you're offering, you're not focused enough? Um, I think we all think you know that everyone living and breathing can be our clients, but the reality is there is a specific niche of people that want to work with you or, or need to work with you. And it's really about finding that right niche or that right audience. And if you do that, and as you know from a marketing side, if you're effective at doing that, that's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. If everyone is your client, then really nobody is because you can't differentiate yourself to the point where a customer can truly understand why they need your product or your service over somebody else's. So for me, it's always been about getting that clarity in the business owner's head of, you know, what's their mission? What's their true why of existence? And how is that different from their competitors? Because there's enough room for pretty much everybody around here. And, and the reason that some businesses succeed while others fail really comes down to that clarity that they can bring in to their company and, and their people. Because once you figure out what it is you want, what that true mission is, then it's directing it to your employees and your staff to live that mission. And if they're effective at doing that, that's where customer service increases, that's where quality increases, that's where people buy into systems and, and help you make the changes you want to make versus you having to force those changes down somebody else's throat. And then, as we know, all know in a change management process like that, there's a lot of resistance that happens. And that resistance then slows the process down and also gets the owner to believe that they can't, there's nothing that's going to change anything. So they then have to take full ownership of it. And that's where the micromanagement comes in and, and all the things that weigh a business down and prevent it from growing. I, and it's a very, very holistic approach, right? Rather than mm -hmm. just nailing into that sales factor, right? Yeah, just, this is not a one size fits all by any stretch. Um, you really have to look again across the board at everything that you're doing and it, Typically where I win my businesses, they've tried other coaches or consultants and they found that the one, the, the surefire system that's going to get them there or get things done actually isn't what does it. And they invest a lot of time and a lot of money in processes that really don't change anything because, again, there isn't full buy-in from everyone in the organization. And what, what's one person's solution might not be your solution. Because every company is different. It's like every person. It's got a unique living you know, it's a unique living entity in some ways because as a culture develops, the uniqueness of the company develops. It starts at the top and, and flows down through the people in the, in the company. So you really have to look at everything that a, a business owner is doing and everything that their employees are doing. And then you look outwards to, to vendors and customers and you look at all the facets of it. And it's really kind of like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, making sure that all the pieces are in the right spot. Absolutely. And what a jigsaw puzzle that is. Uh, Sometimes more complicated than others. I imagine. Oh my goodness. Let's not talk about how many puzzle pieces are in some of those. So when I when I'm listening to you and I'm hearing you, I, I love it. And I love focusing down on that that one core message. And I love I love the idea of developing your business uniqueness because that's really what helps you set apart from the rest of the herd. So uh, I wouldn't be sassy if I didn't do this. What would you say is, is envision is Dan Paulson's unique opportunity. Why would a business owner like me? And I mean, I'm probably the next one on your plate. I'm growing, growing rapidly, but I'm human and Oh my Lanta. Um, and I know all about getting stuck working in and not working on your business. So, when you're when you're talking to someone like me, who I mean, geez, I'm sitting here hanging off every word you've got to say. What can you do for me? What can Dan Paulson do that I couldn't necessarily get anywhere else? And I know the answer, but I want my audience to hear it. <laughs> well, I think the magic for me is, uh, you know, it's a number of different things, but it really boils down to I ask very good questions. I ask the questions that other people might assume you already know the answer to. Uh, I ask the questions that maybe you hadn't quite thought of before. So it's you don't know what you don't know, but it's, it's getting you to look at your business in a different perspective. I think that's part of it. I think another part of it is if you talk to any of my clients, you'll find out I've got their back. And in other words, what I mean by that is if you need me, you call me and I will be there for you. And I am I'm very much a loyalist to my clients and really support them in, in a different way than other people might because they're looking at adding volumes of people to their 
to their client list where I typically only look to work with like 10 to 12 companies in a year. And the difference is really more that hands-on approach that you're not going to get from somebody else. I will sit down with you and we'll go through the P&Ls, for example. I'm working with somebody right now on an incentive plan. They implemented one two years ago and now they're doing so well as actually putting them in jeopardy because they're giving so much money out in bonuses that they don't know where it's going. So I've got to come in and help them figure out how to do that and then help them restructure an incentive plan where everybody wins. Because if you don't, if the employees don't win, then the owner's not going to win either. So it's it's really coming in and looking at their business, helping them figure out what's working, what's not, asking the right questions, getting them to dig into their own uh, head a little bit and, and kind of understanding what it is that they truly want to create. And then taking them through a process of doing that. So it's it's a little bit of coaching, it's a little bit of consulting, it's a little bit of operations, a little bit of everything, which you're not typically going to find in anyone else. That's, that is true. And I will give you that. You are an amazing all around, see the whole scope kind of person, which is just absolutely phenomenal to see you at work. Thank but you. I will let the audience decide and uh, follow you along for that. <laughs> and you won't be disappointed. now. I've heard from business owners, okay, and this would also be something that I am likely to say, let's just be fair, mm -hmm. and what it comes down to is that I'm afraid that I can't find the good people, or if I find them, I'm going to lose them. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually something that I've dealt with recently, so how as a business owner do we overcome that? I mean, other than just hire Dan Paulson, which is the obvious here. <laughs> well, <laughs> as much as I'd say I'd love to completely fix that problem, it's going to be difficult. And I'll tell everyone this, uh, hiring for the next several years, probably the next decade or two, is going to be very tough no matter who you are or what you do. So what you have to do is you have to, like everything else, be different than what your competitors are doing. You have to understand the demographics of what is coming into the marketplace. Uh, the Gen Y, Gen Z have a different approach on work-life balance than the baby boomers or Gen Xers did. So. If you're expecting employees to last you know, 20, 30 years, it's just not gonna happen. So you have to really change your, your business model around hiring, around keeping employees, and, and around succession of employees different than you have in the past. And it's all about making sure that you are in a constant hiring mode. Most people just hire when they need somebody. Well, by that point, it's already too late because if you have really low unemployment, as as you probably know, it's hard to find good people because the good people are already working. So if you aren't out there networking, you aren't out there connecting with people who are available in the workplace, even if they've got a job, it's going to be very difficult to find that person when you need them. Uh, you have to create a work environment that is going to attract that talent in, which means if you're going to plop somebody in a desk and expect them to just follow your orders, it's probably not going to work out too well. Um, this younger generation is extremely bright, uh, is extremely talented, and is extremely undervalued right now. And what we have to do is instead of finding a way to get them to work to our system, we have to modify our system to work with them. And to me, that's about creating autonomy in their position, uh, being more of a leader and a coach than a boss. And if you've ever been working for somebody and and understand the difference, you'll know exactly what I mean. If you're just there to give orders and direct people, that's not gonna work with this generation. They really want more of a supportive role from you. They want more coaching from you. And they also wanna know that what they do matters. And then that circles back down to the mission-driven business, which is if you don't have a clear purpose for why your business exists and how you help others, it's gonna be very hard for people to relate to that. And then they look at it as just a job, which is just a transaction for money. And until a better transaction comes along, they'll stick with you, but it'll probably only be for a short period of time. Uh, I've been fortunate that many of my clients that actually have had employees for longer than the norm, just simply by being very mission driven, paying better than the market rate, um, allowing them to be autonomous in their job, and supporting them in, in many ways. And they'll keep people longer and it also creates this referral network because now the friends want to bring their good coworkers or, or potential coworkers in and work with them. And you get also more of a peer relationship going on which strengthens your ability to get things done because now the peer group forms a tight bond which then they weed out the people who are underperforming or they get them to step up. And it doesn't necessarily require the business owner to do that alone, but you have to set a lot of lots different things in place in your business to make that work and that's where the challenge comes in 
Wow, that's amazing. And so many different pieces to keep together. I mean, I so many that I had like 12 questions and I can't even keep them all sorted. So doing what you do, it, you're really almost taking an outside look at what the business owner should see if they were working on versus working in, right? right. Um, if if there's someone out there, uh, a business owner who's working more in their business, what would you say are those those telltale signs, things that they can watch out for, so that they can maybe catch early uh, what some of us will see coming a little, you know, <laughs> down the road. Well, I think one of the big things is we are creatures of habit, and the best example, um, maybe for noticing what's going on, is if you drive a lot. I drive a lot, um, so you see billboards on the highway, right, and you notice when those billboards change, but then you wait about two or three weeks and they kind of blend into the background again because there's there's nothing new or nothing different. Um, as a business owner, if there is nothing new or nothing different in your business, in other words, if you're not noticing the little things that you used to notice in the beginning or other people aren't noticing those things, that's the sign of a problem right there. Uh, anytime change uh, is difficult to implement because that's not the way we do things, or this is the way things have always been done. Those are the, the two most famous phrases I often hear with a number of my clients or a number of the, their employees is, that's not how we work around here. This is the only way things work. So they're unwilling or unable to change. Um, you know, when we were in the recession a few years back, there were a lot of companies that wanted their employees to be more creative, find newer, different ways of doing things to either save money or grow sales. and your creativity is like a muscle. So if you're not exercising that in your business, it's going to be very hard to implement that when you do reach a point where you need to pull all the collective heads together and figure out how to do something differently. So you got to create a change model that everything's subject to change at some point throughout the, the life cycle of your business. And you've got to condition people that change is the normal and it's not something to be afraid of. It's actually something to embrace. And that, that gets to be the hardest thing because, again, we're creatures of habit. We want to fall into a routine. We want to follow that routine. We want to go through the path of least resistance, but that's not the path of better growth. So we got to figure out a way to manage, make change fun and creative and exciting and not boring, fearful, or destructive. I guess that's the best way to put it. I, I really like that. No, I, and it's about shifting those those perspectives perspectives um, so that change is embraced. So I guess I guess what we're really saying here is that the common theme is that a business gets established and thereby everything gets established and they, they lose their flexibility and it's that loss of flexibility that directly impacts their ability to thrive and grow as a business. Yeah. Think of it as, as we grow up, you know, when are you most creative in your life? I can't think of a kid under the age of five who isn't extremely creative unless you uh, unless you put a screen in front of their face and, and shut down their creativity. But, you know, when I was a kid, I had to entertain myself. I had to draw. I had to go outside and play. I had to, you know, do things to keep myself entertained. And then as we get older, we kind of start losing that creativity because our systems are designed to get us more regimented and in routines and things like that. So what we have to do is we have to reopen, re-engage that creative muscle that we have and, and exercise that as, as much as we can. And the best way to do that is every business faces challenges. All those challenges focus around money, efficiency, systems, process, hiring, firing, whatever it might be. And it's, it's again, pulling that network of people that you've employed around you or that you have subcontracted around you to really help you figure those things out. Absolutely. And I love this concept of, of a, a model of change. So when you're working with business owners, you're, you're quite literally developing a strategy based on the fact that shit happens. Yes, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, they're going to quit. The economy is going to shift. Sales that were great in one area today might really suck tomorrow. It's, it's really about being proactive to those changes instead of reactive. And if you look at most companies, they're reactive. They wait until something negative happens and then they want to change it. And that's what I really found out during the recession is when they were forced to change, now they didn't have the resources to do it because they weren't in a position where the, they could prevent or at least minimize what was happening. 
And, and that's what really sucked is you saw a lot of these companies just fall, in, fall into the old habit of, well, business is slowing down, so we're just going to cut people. And at that point, you probably couldn't do anything different. But if if you had really set up your business to look at those opportunities, where are, where are those opportunities where we can grow? Maybe you could shift or pivot your business so that when those negative things do happen, you can work through them or around them more effectively. And that, that's probably the hardest part for businesses to do because we are so much involved in putting out fires. And, and that's why I see with a lot of my business owners is they're so used to putting out fires that they don't know what to do once we stop putting out the fires. And that's, that's really the biggest risk I have when I'm working with the company is, is you get that business owner to a point, usually about you know anywhere in that first nine to 12 months where all of a sudden all the noise that they're typically used to goes away. It quiets down, and now if we don't repurpose them into what they need to do to function or focus on growing the business, they start causing things to happen that now re-engage the fires that happened in the past. So that's that's probably one of the most difficult things is really as you take away certain responsibilities, you've got to backfill those holes with with something else, and that comes into now – now that we've gotten all these obstacles out of the way, what are we doing to create new challenges or, or new things to take to to get the business fired up again? Absolutely. Absolutely. And since we're talking about getting fired up and pivoting businesses and all that great stuff. Um, so I know that you have something coming up really cool and I will we'll just kind of hint at it because I really do want people to follow along and stay in touch with the progress but you have been planning a really amazing mastermind session so that you can help and take some of these folks out and really get down to the core and break into it right um yep. without going into too much detail because uh we'll we'll release it a little bit later we just want to wet some whistles what what are the the benefits and, and what was the purpose behind your amazing super secretive mastermind <laughs> well, the benefits and the purpose, I guess the main purpose is to get you out of your own environment. I believe that once we, and I experienced this, I had an office in China actually for about seven years. And when I first went over there, it was a whole new experience for me. It was a whole new culture. Uh, it forced me to learn things differently or to rely on my own creativity to get around. For example, the city I was staying in, I wanted to go to see the Great Wall. I don't speak, I didn't at the time speak any Chinese, not that I speak <laughs> much Mandarin right now, but I had to figure out how to get from where I was at to Beijing, connect with my ride in Beijing to get to the Great Wall and then safely get back home in, in between two cities of approximately anywhere between 12 to 15 million people apiece. Um, it's hard enough going to New York, for example, and getting around, let alone going to a completely different country where everything's written in a completely different language and you know, few people might speak your language. So the whole purpose of, of doing this retreat is to take people to an area where they might not be as familiar with so that they can open their, their eyes or their senses in different ways than, than they had previously done in the past. So we looked at going to the Caribbean or we looked at going somewhere in the U.S. and it really didn't make much sense because, again, it's familiarity. Most people have traveled to those places and they're fairly westernized, so they're pretty easy to get around. So we were looking for another place that we could go that was intriguing, uh, exciting, inspiring, and, and also allowed you to experience a different culture and learn from what a different culture does in their in you know, their economy to generate business that you might be able to bring back with you. And the other thing was to try and get away from hopefully some of the cell phone usage, some of the uh, electronic usage so that you can really sit down and, and calm your mind and focus on the things that are important to you and do so with a bunch of peers who are also going through similar challenges in their business. So it's, it's not just me coming up and being the Oracle and speaking in front of a group of people. It's really a bunch of talented, like-minded business owners coming together and working together to solve the problems that they're having or at least put together an action plan with real world experience that's going to be beneficial to their outcomes. And I would say that's that's probably the biggest impact I plan on making with this mastermind is you're going to build relationships with, you know, five to ten other business owners much like yourself that are going to you know hopefully be lifetime connections that you can look back on, you can reach out to and in turn, you can help and watch each other grow through this process. 
Wow. Oh my God. It sounds amazing. I love the idea of going to another place and being creative in another place because you know what? That's one of those things. Take yourself out of your environment. It's easier to see outside the box when you're no longer standing in it. So I think that's fantastic. And even though I know more details, I know that we're, we're, we're going to drip them out nice, nice and slowly. So guys, stay tuned. Uh, Dan's on Facebook. He's got his own website. I mean, follow along. I will be posting stuff. He'll be posting stuff um, because his mastermind is going to come up really, really soon. And you're never going to see another experience like that. I'm just saying, I'm like chomping at the bit. Just chomp, chomp. Uh, so Dan, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Uh, we've had a really great audience. Looks like everybody's been hanging off your every word. If you were going to leave the fantastic business audience here, with one last statement, one last little Dan, the million dollar man nugget, what would it be? I, I would say the one thing I would tell people is question everything. If you're doing well, great. Why are you doing well? If you're not doing well, question that too. If you want to be doing well, what is it that needs to change to, to get you where you need to be? It's really asking the right questions and digging into the things that we don't normally take the time or want to dig into because it might expose somewhere that we need to improve, uh, something we need to change. It might also expose the fact that we need to ask for help. And, and that's a big thing that other business owners don't really take the time to do is really ask for help. When you're stuck, reach out, find somebody who might be able to give you the answer and, and, and might be able to help you figure things out. So I guess that is actually two pieces of advice. So ask the right questions and ask for help and that'll get you where you need to go. I love it. And yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Ask, always ask, never stop asking questions are the lifeblood of change. And we've just heard from Dan that that is the reason that we manage growth. So <laughs> super, super, super happy you could join me today. I've had so much fun and I've learned so much. Thank you for joining us, Dan. And anybody in the audience, if you have any other questions, please drop them in the comments below. I will make sure that Dan gets them. Catherine says, thank you so much. I guess she's definitely enjoyed it at least as much as I have. Um, and otherwise, thank you so much, Dan. And I hope everybody has an excellent day. Oh, thank you, Sasha. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye. Bye.